All right, this is a problem in finite elements, and we are looking at a bar assemblage. This yellow rectangle represents a rigid bar, so therefore there will be no bending or any kind of shape change in this material. We also have a bar here and two on this side. We have a 12,000 pound force acting right here at the middle. And they want us to find displacements at U1234. They want us to find the global forces at 1, 3 and 4. At 2 we have, we know it, that's what, what, that's what is given. And they want us to find the local forces in each element. I have the elements marked over here, this with the number with the circle around it, element 1, element 2, and element 3. Alright, first thing first, uh, usually in these problems the best thing to start with is to find our local stiffness matrices for each element. We're gonna get started with element number 1. This is the formula that we're gonna be working with to write up our local stiffness matrices. AE over L times this little 2 by 2 matrix 1, negative 1, negative 1, 1. Fill it out. A is given. E, we need to pay attention to it because we have two values of Young's modulus given. Element 1, we have Young's modulus E1. So therefore 30 times 10 to the 6th divided by its length which is 50 inches and we have the value element 2 let's plug it in our e2 belongs here which is 10 times 10 to the 6th length is 30 we'll plug it in we have our value and element 3 is equal to element 2 so it will be the exact same as over here now uh it's always beneficial to try to factor out something that you can take out from all three since we're going to be combining them into our global stiffness matrix. And as we can look, we can see that 10 to the 6th is common in all three of these. So therefore, we can make an extra effort and making sure that in front of our matrices we have a common value for all three of them 10 to the sixth 10 to the sixth 10 to the sixth and everything else just put it inside the matrix and they are therefore our global stiffness matrix will look much prettier now another thing that is very useful to mark is the information that belongs to each glo uh, local stiffness matrix as we can tell, element 1 is bordered by node 1 and 2. And they, I like to write this information right here next to it. Displacement, in the, we are working in just one dimension. Everything is in the x dimension, right? So, displacement at node 1, displacement at node 2. Same thing in writing the, uh, in the vertical way. Our element 2 is bordered by point 2, point 3. We're going to represent the same in, over here. And even though element 2 and 3, we have the same values, we need to note that the information does not belong to the same information because this is U2, U3. Over here we have U2, U4. This element is bordered by 2 and 4, this one by 2 and 3. This will be very important and very useful in the next step when we are doing our global stiffness matrix. Alright, here it is, my global stiffness matrix, 10 to the 6th, as we factor it out from all 3, and all the values that I already filled out. On top and on the side, I have the information that will be transferred, right? Displacement at U at 1, 2, 3, 4, same down here. And this way, when I'm transferring information from here into here, 
it is much easier to keep track of. If you don't know how to transfer this, this and this info into the global stiffness matrix, check the earlier uh, videos in this playlist. Over there I go over it in much more detail. Here I'm just going to focus on the process itself. So after we have this, we can continue. Now we can continue with our F equals KX force on a spring formula. Here our K is not represented with just a simple spring K since we are working with bars. So therefore it's AE over L with this matrix and it turns into our global stiffness matrix. Let's expand these, shall we? The matrix form our global uh, forces F1, F2, F3 and F4 all in the X direction equals the global stiffness matrix, what we find right here, plug it in without any change, and times displacements, displacements at node 1, 2, 3 and 4. Now let's check what do we know and what do we don't know in this equation. F1 we don't know, F2 it's given, this is what we know, 12,000 pounds right here. F3 and 4, we don't know. These three unknowns is what we need to find. On this side, U1, U3 and U4, they are fix, fixed supports. Therefore, the displacement at this point, we can cross them out confidently because they are zero. The only value here is U2. This is our value that we need to find first. Now U2 and this line with the F2x it's also known. The only thing that we are missing is U2, the only unknown. We can go ahead and simply find it. This is this line is the only equation that we are working with from this whole matrix setup. So just write it up. 12,000 equals 10 to the 6th times, well, this matrix gets multiplied with these, right, and added up. But since these are 0, everything falls out except this 2.533 times U2. And then it would have 0 plus this plus, on the end, two more zeros. So there's no point in writing those from these. U2 equals there's our value for the displacement at node 2. Now that we have, we have found displacement at U2, we have everything we need to find our global forces. Since we can go back and if we use just this equation or just this equation or just this equation, every single time the only unknown will be our force that we need to find since u2 we found right here and here it is f1x equals 10 times negative 1.2 u2 and this will give us the nice value for our global force 5680 for the first one and here's the other two as well and the final questions for this problem are the local forces in each element, element 1, 2 and 3. We're going to rely on the same formula that we use right here, but instead of global form, we're going to use it in local form, where little f equals the little k times displacements. And let's get started with our first element. Element 1 is bordered by point 1 and 2, right? So our displacement is going to be U1 and U2. The forces here, we have little f 1x on this side. And on this side, we have little f 2x. Both of them marked as belonging to element 1 times the stiffness matrix the local stiffness matrix from here that we found for element 1 right here go ahead and 
solve everything u1 u2 we have it u1 is zero u2 we found plug it in and we have our two values for our local forces exact same process we're gonna follow for element two and element three board element two is bordered by point two and three element three is bordered by point two and four same thing is going to be represented throughout this here we see displacements at u2 and u3 for element 3 displacements at u2 and u4 solve the matrices and here you can see our values for our local forces